We are back to the mail Podcast. After taking a week off last week to celebrate the beautiful holiday that is Thanksgiving, I'm here with Randy Trembacki. Randy, how was your Thanksgiving? Oh, it was fantastic. I was up in Michigan. And uh, it's first time, second time ever in Michigan. You know, Why were right you there. in Michigan? My brother just moved there. Oh, cool. So I got a new house, got to see the nieces. It was very fun. You were doing uncle shit. I was doing funkel shit because I'm oh, uncle. Oh, okay. Where's that? Where's funkel from? Uh, just fun uncle. No, no, no. I know, but like... Was that in like the SpongeBob episode or yeah, something? It might, I don't know. I don't think it's from anything. It you know, F is for friends who do stuff together. U is for you and me. N is work for anywhere. Anytime, anywhere at all. Down here in the deep blue sea. We were just been doing a <laughs> bunch of SpongeBob quotes right before we started recording. So it's fresh in our minds. It is, for better or worse. What was your favorite side at Thanksgiving, Randy? Since you, you don't get to contribute much to the discourse uh, on the pods daily, I'll, the floor is now yours. I will say... The oh can't say that. <laughs> the what what can't you say? Can't say I will say. People don't like that. Oh, uh, <laughs> speaking of the Discord, uh, I think that was a Reddit thing. Uh, okay. But our family is very. We're usually the sweet potato casserole family when from the extended family. So, but this sweet was just a small potato gather. casserole. Yeah. Okay. So you know you got the butter, you got the brown sugar, the marshmallows. So that's usually favorite because that's the one i know how to make that's how we usually do it but since it was just a small thing we made everything when i say we i mean my brother and his wife did everything but nice. i'm also a big green bean casserole guy yeah okay the two casseroles pretty good i'll yeah. I'll, I'll i'll do a green bean casserole we used to do we called them yams instead of sweet potatoes <clears throat> are they the same thing i think they're interchangeable i don't know if they are are they separate things you know adam they might be the same thing. It just might be a, di- a regional dialect. Like They're fire- completely different vegetables. Okay, I thought so, yeah. Because like fireflies and lightning bugs are the same thing. But yeah, I thought yams and sweet potatoes were different. I guess they are. I don't know. Sorry, I thought they were the same thing. Interesting. This is a big uh, big episode for me. This is the first time on a, on a podcast with video that I'm not running the cameras. Who is? <laughs> it's Cool Adam. Cool Adam's mic is officially up. We have a producer mic. What's up, Cool Adam? Yes, well, yes. Our youth correspondent. Yeah. And now it's down. Yes, Randy. Yeah. Yes, a yell across the room. I'm excited to have you back on the mail in podcast. Uh, I'm excited to be back on the mail in podcast. It's been a, a, a break for Thanksgiving. So am I. So, I, haven't, I, haven't been, uh, I haven't been on in a while. And let me tell you, I have a shower thought at the end. Wow. I so couple. do I. I have, a, I, have some, I have a notes that I keep track of. But for anyone else here for the first time, you may be wondering what the mail in podcast is. Simply put, we answer your questions. Situations in your 20s or 30s that you need help with, and we're here to do just that. Get a laugh in and maybe walk away with something useful. How can you help us out? Tell a friend about the Mail-In Podcast. Maybe send them a clip or a segment that made sense for their situation. Subscribe on iTunes and follow on Spotify. Hit the hotline number to leave a voicemail, 888-362-MAIL. That's 888-362-6245. Or you can write in at the link to the Twitter bio at Mail in podcast. Sally will be back next week. But you want us to get right, right into it, Randy? <laughs> Let's do it. Let's go. This one is specifically for Randy. This one says, Hello, Randy. Yeah. Just kidding. It's for me and Sally, but Sally's not <laughs> yeah, here. He so. just, Brett literally just changed it to say, Hey, Brett and Sally to Hey, Brett and Randy. In the Let me put it this way this one's for me and Sally, but uh, Randy can help out with this one. I'll here try we go. Then. Obviously, neither of you have been single in quite a while. But I'd love some advice on how to deal with singleness. Okay, this one's specifically for me. (laughs) I'm at an age where basically all of my friends are married or at least living together, and I've been on my own for a few years. It's not that I necessarily hate being single, but I definitely want a relationship, slash I'm scared of the biological clock ticking. But then at the same time, trying to find someone is getting exhausting. Any advice on how to balance wanting to date with how tiresome dating apps have become? Again, the floor is yours. All right. Well, uh, are you single, Randy? Well, I think that this person might be a, a few years older than me. What gives you that idea? Maybe they're a few years younger than you. I, well, it depends on what their friends are like, but I still have a lot of single friends or people that aren't married. But you know, a lot of people are married, I guess, in their thirties and stuff. There's still a lot of single twenty year olds. Sure. So, so I don't know. Just keep doing your thing. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> well, so you know, like I, I, so I was single coming into when I moved to Austin, and I had been. It would have been like. Three year, I guess three ish years since like a serious relationship, and I remember kind of having this fatigue where it's like, okay, I've done the single thing in New York for a while, and now I'm ready to, like, I'm ready for a relationship. I have, I've had that feeling, then I've also had the feeling where, oh, I'm single now. I, I don't want a relationship. I wonder what do you do. You have like a, 
an idea of what changes in your mind? Like what what causes that trigger? And have you been through that? Um, yeah, I guess I can. I think it's more age too. Mm-hmm. But definitely the older I get, the more I'm like, all right, maybe I should start getting in a relationship and think about it. And then also it's like, I like being single and having the freedom of doing my own stuff. I'm still right on the, like, on the you, edge you of go back, that. You go back and I, forth I go on back it. and forth. Yeah. But, I mean, I think I still lean more towards the single. But for me, it's always I'll never get in a relationship with someone, like, just to be in a relationship. So it's thing is, like, I just started dating and using the apps not necessarily looking f- like like I need to get locked down and need to get this going right now, but hoping it happens, mm-hmm. but not expecting it to happen. I think that's a big thing. You just don't lowering be, your expectations. Maybe not like lowering your expectations, but if you're trying to like date right now for the like with marriage in mind, you're just going to be like looking for fa- faults and being like, all right, I don't like this about this person, or like you're just going to be expecting too much right from from the front. So I guess. I mean, that's a big issue you're having right now in this question is that that is on your mind. Yeah. And it's hard to put that at the back of your mind. So the best thing I can say is just just keep on going on dates with new people and just trying as much as possible to put yourself out there. I know dating apps do get exhausting, but you definitely will like message one person, you'll have a conversation, and then things will just fizzle out. Yeah. It does get like exhausting. Like I wonder that. if the word fizzle has like increased tenfold in popularity to describe really situationships that have formed online yeah in the last like decade adam's nodding yes mm, yes it's a fizzle out <laughs> is like the new i don't even know like i mean we, that's we broke the, up that's like the oh, easiest way to end a relationship it's like no animosity it's like oh i guess things just kind of ended it's like not not ghosting it's just oh all yeah, right, you go from like texting every every hour to every six hours to every two days, and yeah. then it and that's that's textbook fizzle material. Randy, I think you're right though. I think you need to go into any dating situation, whether it's like being set up by a friend, which I could I could never stand that when when my friends would be like, "Oh, I have this perfect girl for you. Like she's going to be at the pregame. Like we're going to leave you two alone." Yeah. It's like, "No. That's, stop doing that's that." That's too much expectation and like yeah. everyone's like looking at you guys in the corner of your eye and then you both clearly know what's going on that yeah. you're like expected and if you're not feeling it it just becomes awkward for everyone. So, but I guess when I say put yourself out there, try other stuff than dating apps. Mm-hmm. I mean, and don't expect every match to be your husband or wife. Exactly. Like I, I've thought about this too, but like joining groups or like going on these, there's t- tons of stuff. Like there's singles outings and stuff. I've never done that, but it could be something to explore. And it does, I guess, sometimes get lonely. Like I'm about to be 13 wheeling on a uh, New Year's this year. 13th wheel. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it's either like 13th or like 9th. Like I'm going to a but cabin. Not a, but not 11th, Adam. Yeah, and I might not be. Like it. <laughs> it's going to be me and like five couples and like one other single guy that we're like friends with. And so, but the thing is, I'm like kind of. You just used did to all that. the wrong numbers. That I would don't be know. that it's, would be twelve. You'd be you'd be me and him will be both eleven and 12. twelve. Yeah, you. I guess technically you could be the eleventh wheel and he could be the twelfth friend. Will we both be the eleventh wheel though? Well, you have each other. We're friends. Yeah, we're. we're Where are you uh, going to New Year's? Uh, we're going to Northwest Indiana in some Airbnb cabin. Ooh. So, yeah, really. See the movie Cabin in the Woods? You know what? Actually, a kind of decent comedy horror. Only saw Followed up by another movie, Cabin in the Woods 2. I didn't. Oh, did they have it? They, I don't know. I'm just making shit up. Okay. Oh, Any other singleness advice? Uh, I mean, use this time to work on yourself. Ooh, I like that. Is, is the best best thing. I mean... Hotness journey, perhaps. Hotness career the, journey. The I I I don't know if this is off base saying, but I'm assuming this is a woman because she says biological mm. clock ticking. I don't think any guy ever thinks that way. Do you oh, think I that? do. Yeah, do you think absolutely. Biological clock. Yeah, yeah. Do you, Adam? I mean, not yeah. in like the not in the. I th- I think I'm probably different in that. I think more of like f- probably ten years behind where a. And let me mansplain here. I probably think about 10 years behind where a female would, right? Where oh, it's yeah. like, I want to be a dad, but I don't need to be a dad by 29, right? Whereas girls are like, there's that stat where if you're 35 and you're having children, you're considered like geriatric and high risk. 
So I, my, I'd say biological clock can be both, but probably different. Yeah. And, but I guess in the sense for a guy, biological <clears throat> clock ticking, like my brother, who I was just with for uh, Thanksgiving, Shouts. has three kids and mm-hmm. he's 34. So like by the time they're in their 20s and like 30s, he's still going to be a pretty young father. Like he's going to be able to grow up with his grandkids and stuff. And like, I don't really see kids on my horizon anytime soon. So it does, like my dad is a lot older, older than me. Like I think I, he was in his 40s when okay. he had me. So like, like he might never get to like meet my grandkids and stuff. So it does like at that Damn. point, just like s- s- does kind of suck that yeah. like, when you're younger and have kids, I think it is nicer at being able to that. So I can see like, yeah, sometimes I get like, okay, yeah. I want to, I want to start family, so other stuff. But I hear it, I do. I thought like when I was like 21, I was like, oh, I'm gonna be 27 year old dad, like married with kids and be a little league coach at 32. Like, that was my plan. And then obviously plans change, Randy. Yes, exactly. So I guess the keep best kicking. advice I can say is work on yourself and keep an open mind going into this stuff and just keep trying. I mean, that's the best thing to do it, and try different ways other than dating apps. And honestly, it might might be time to actually try dating services. Like, or you just like totally take your mind off the dating part of it and let things happen because I feel, for me anyway, that's when I've gone on the most successful dates you want to call them like when you when you're not expecting anything and you don't like consider something a date or consider a night out like you're on the prowl for somebody like trying to you know hook up that's when the best things happen see i agree with that but i also disagree with that as in that if you don't if Middle you're not trying land. nothing's going to happen oh okay like, you're, if you're not going out and like doing anything well yeah you're if you're sitting on your couch anyone, at home so. it's one thing yeah. but I mean, going out with with the idea that you're not like trying to talk to somebody. And yeah, you're just going to, you're going out happen. with your friends and see what happens. That's that's my advice. So, that's our advice, I guess. I I hope we helped. You mentioned your dad, Randy. What are you getting him for Christmas this year? I don't know. You know uh, maybe could, I can get him uh, maybe some glasses or a watch or something. I don't know. You're exactly right. How about a movement watch, Randy? In a tiny apartment in Southern California, two college dropouts teamed up to create a watch company that broke all of the rules with fair prices, unexpected colors, and clean original designs. Movement grew into one of the fastest growing watch brands, shipping to over 160 countries across the globe. Now movement has expanded into blue light glasses that protect your eyes from your screens. Minimalist jewelry and more style essentials that don't break the bank. All designed out of their California headquarters. Randy, do you have a favorite style of movement watch? Uh, I have, I believe, two or one of them. The one that I use a lot is like a, it's murdered out. It's all Whoa. It's all black, and I really like that one. I'm looking Very to, sleek. I can't wait to get a pair of black boots and wear this watch out all the time with it. And I put but, on my boots. These do, do. boots, yeah. Um, but I also love their blue blockers, which I, Adam, are mine over there. Can you throw them to me? They're and they're in the other room. I use them every single day, and just sitting in front of that computer screen when I'm <coughs> when I'm producing over here or doing like editing and stuff. My eyes get so strained and like dried out that I I, I started using these. I'm, they make a world of difference. And I think Adam's actually ran into the other room to Look go get that. them for me. So what a good intern. Let, let's see. You guys might be able oh. to see these on camera. Toss him. Toss me. Don't let the elf know. Oh, all right. Those are oh, those are legit. And they yeah, they look very stylish. They're not like uh, the yellow. Yeah, thing. yeah. They, yeah. they look like a normal pair of glasses. They actually look like my normal pair of glasses too. So I could just be wearing these and or my other ones, and you would never know. Look at look Good how stylish you. I am, everyone. I love it. I'm a big fan of the eagle tan myself. A little rose gold watch uh, with a white face and the brown leather. Can't go wrong. I've had a movement watch for like. Six years now. I love great. It. They're, I love it. Great price point too, because they look like four hundred or five hundred dollar watches for a fraction of that. Because they're built online, and they're own and they own their process from start to finish. You get a beautiful watch shipped right to your door for free, and if you don't love it, you can ship it right back for free. If this holiday season you want to elevate your look with style that does not break the bank, then join the movement and get fifteen percent off today with free shipping. And free returns by going to movement MVMT, excuse me, by going to MVMT.com slash mail it. Again, that's MVMT.com slash mail it.
How about a voicemail, Randy? Let's do it. All right. I'm glad that the voicemail ends with all topics are on the table because this is a little out there. But when you are, like, super bored in a place, like you're at, like, a conference or it's, like, just a place you don't want to be at and it's going to take a long time, like a graduation, what's, like, the weirdest thing your mind does to try to pass the time? Like, I was thinking sometimes I will sit in a chair and think to myself, like, what is the furthest thing I could throw a tennis ball off to where it'll actually come back and roll all the way to me. Just very concise. What is the weirdest thing your mind goes to when you're bored? And what is, when do you get the most bored, Randy? Oh, man. I, I think the way that he said this, when you're in the audience and you have to be at something that you don't necessarily want to be at, like if you're at like a like a show or movie, like you're entertained the whole time, but yeah. if you're at like a graduation... A or wedding, perhaps? Not, not to get uh, too... Religious here, church. When I was a kid, <laughs> <laughs> or we're also church a Catholic wedding. Yeah. Oh God. Because those suckers are ninety minutes of yeah. pure joy. Yeah. If you're not standing up and like having to move around and stuff, yeah, that, it's a lot of fun. Um, so for that, it depends on the situation. If you're with someone, like me and my brother, we would just you know lightly punch each other all the time just to keep ourselves, you know. It would be shenanigans and not the best thing. But if you're by yourself and you're stuck in your mind prison, uh, I think I just count things. You like, count. I, I'll, like I'll just start counting the ceiling tiles. And like the thing is, I could cl- do like here do a grid thing and I could figure it out pretty easily. But like, I you're just, a counter. I, I mean, if, if I'm that bored, it's like all right, just count like a bunch of random stuff. Like how many flags are in here? Like how many how many seats do I think are in here? Let's start counting that row. <laughs> Oh my god, it's it's boring. <laughs> That's what I'm supposed to do. Just keep the, the mind stimulated in some way. Who was that guy that went viral for counting to a hundred thousand? Did you see that? I, I did not. Is it Mr. Beast? I think he did that. Mister, I did watch the Squid Game one. It was pretty entertaining. <clears throat> um, where does my mind go when I board? Uh, pretty much just anxiety, just crippling anxiety of like, oh, this could potentially happen to me or my family or my friends or, oh. Uh, just like, oh, what what would happen if an asteroid came through the building right now? You don't clock the exits and see, like, all right, if there was an active shooter, this is how oh, we that, get Oh, definitely it. that, too. Who doesn't, uh, who, who doesn't do that? Yeah, no, I mean, uh, prayers go up to the school in Michigan. Yeah, yeah. Goodness. Lots um, of prayers. But, yeah, usually it's, it's anxiety-induced thoughts of, like, where do I have to be after this? I, a lot of scheduling. Maybe some daydreaming involved, too. Oh, daydreaming, huge. Yep, I get I can get lost in like a zone pretty quickly where I'm thinking about twenty years down the line, like what is my living room gonna look like? Oh, I, I've never done that. You know what really helps in those situations? What's up? It sounded like I was about to go in. I had to read there. Uh, a uh, pamphlet. What's it called? A prayer book? No, the the one that like the itinerary of the like the graduation. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Can't. Where you just flip through that the uh, you, you, itinerary. That's been solid. Itinerary. The program. Program. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Program. And like it's it'll have like programs at weddings are huge too. It'll like have like, all right, here's like the bride walks down the way all and just being able to check those off as soon as something switches, because it's not like obvious when things switch. You're like, all right, that was the valedictorian speech. Yes, let's go. Right, let's go Ooh. to the next thing. They're just it's just so nice being able to see that thing dwindle and seeing how much left I have. Yes. That's a good one. Yeah. Cause you it's kind of like an internal clock. Because like, you, right, we're yeah, here. and and this is by the way. Normally, I just, I'm just going on Twitter and scroll. But if scrolling is not an option, yeah, you have to have your phone on, and you have to keep your mind occupied. It's definitely like, I wonder if like a little asteroid came in the, through the roof. Like, what would happen? Just a little small one. Just like, yeah. And what are the chances of that? Just like, phew. I don't know. Or I'm or I'm like commenting on the. Uh, I just for some reason I'm just picturing a wedding that I'm like I'm not in. It's taking a long time. And I'm in the back of the pews, and I'm just like, oh, this is beautiful, and I tear up every time the bride comes down the aisle, without fail. Do 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 do. Just toast. Absolutely toast. Yeah. Every time. Is that is I don't that real tears or is that uh, wedding crasher tears? No, no, no. <laughs> it's not. It's not fake tears, Randy. <laughs> it is like, oh damn, like that got me. I don't know why. Every it could be. I could have known you for like. 24 hours and just met you at the at the Friday night uh, rehearsal dinner. Toast. 
Uh, another thing, which we've talked about this before on here, is okay. timing things, which is another for, form of counting, right? But especially at the weddings. When did we talk about that? When we were talking about wedding bets. Oh, so if you like, we still need to do that, Colin. If you like, yeah, if you like time the the ceremony or whatnot, you like watching and like. There's if you have a line there, it's exciting to watch the clock being like, all right, are they gonna hit that under or the over? Like oh, stuff like that yeah. helps. We should do uh at the wash Christmas party. Well let's bring back some some drink bets. Ooh. Odds. Odds, Adam. He doesn't have anything in front of him. <laughs> you wanna go to the next one, Randy? Yeah. Hey Brett and Randy. How long do you have to wait before replacing a gift that your significant other gave you? Uh oh. My girlfriend is not the best gift giver and has often just ended up asking me for exactly what I want. While I don't mind specifically telling her, the issue is she ends up making some change to the style, color, or material that I usually don't love. Specifically, can I get myself a new wallet this year if the one she gave me last year is somewhat bulky and my cards are constantly falling out? The answer is no, you cannot. <laughs> I guess you have to suck it up. See, this is see, this goes back to question one. This is why I'm single <laughs> because I would be like, Yeah, this just doesn't work that well. You should just be like, Super. I, I mean, I, I get uh, a year is probably fine, though. yeah, a year is probably fine. But, but you, if, I'm you, not, if you get the wallet for Christmas and by January 3rd you are you're rocking the old one, she's gonna be like, Hey, what about that wallet I got you? Is it something you is it something about it? Is it something and then in that terms, is it something about me? You don't like me because I got you a wallet that you don't like. See, I think, and in then this, you break up. And in then this situation, her friends hate you because she didn't. Uh, you, she got you a gift that you didn't use, and she told your friends that it has something more to do with your relationship than might be a little deeper than the surface level. And and then all of a sudden, you're single going into your senior year of uh, high school. I don't know. It could be something like that. This seems oddly specific. <laughs> Did you write this question? No, it wasn't <laughs> me. It wasn't me. I just did. Caroline recently get you a wallet. Theoretically, <laughs> she did not, but she would give me a great wallet if she did. I think I. In this situation, I would have to like just take the wallet and go, honey. And then, like, I turn it upside down, everything falls out. I'd be like, I need a new wallet. But you know, maybe that's why I'm single. <laughs> the practicality is lacking here. What if, okay, let's take the wallet away. What if she gives you a shirt that's like, ooh, doesn't fit perfectly, but she likes it on you? See, that's the difference. If, if she thinks I look good in it, mm -hmm. then I am willing to. Sacrifice comfort. If it's utility wise, mm. or like like head like uh, do they say headphones? In no, here? they, said, they said different material or style of color. I, I'm thinking of this because I recently asked for new uh, Bluetooth headphones. I asked specifically for you this asked, style. You, you this asked color. me for them. I did, and then I realized <laughs> I probably wasn't getting them, so I I told my dad exactly the style and color mm. I wanted. So, but like if. Well, this goes back to when my dad got me a pink iPhone, but <laughs> I'm not gonna get replace that. Uh, but yeah, like that, like just a little different color, you might have to suck it up there. Yeah, I think so. So I guess his overall question is, what do I do that my girlfriend's a bad gift giver? Is that is that no? He's saying question? he's saying how long do I need to oh, suck okay. it up before I can just get my own thing? Uh, I think if if it's like something you use every day, like six months is probably fine. And be like, oh babe, like something happened to it, it ripped. Ah, uh, the base of any good relationship. The white lie. lie. The white no 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 <laughs> the white lie. Not the not the deep lie, the white lie, which is, yeah, I think six months is fine. Yeah. And then if there's like like I said, the iPhone or like some nice earphone stuff, you might just have to suck it up if you don't like the color, unless it's like a specifically like vibrant like orange that you really don't like. But like ah, you might just want to replace them immediately. Yeah, because it's like, either you have to do it immediately or you have to suck it up. Well, I try to think of like, let's put the shoe on the other foot here. If you're getting a girl like jewelry or something for Christmas and it's like, you didn't clear it with her ahead of time and she doesn't like it. That's a tough, that's a tough scenario because it it's like scenario. expensive and she doesn't like it and she wants to look good, but you like it. You know, you know, it's what, tough. you know what? We always made fun of my mom for this, <laughs> but every single time she would give us Poor a mom gift, kitchen straight, <laughs> but Every single time, she would always just go, the gift receipt's in there if you don't want it. Yeah, oh, yeah, so, yeah. And, like, That's a very we, Midwest we kinda, like We, <laughs> we kind of always made that joke. But now I kind of, like, in this situation, I get it now. Like, always include the gift receipt. And, like, that's pretty much a way of saying, like, I won't be offended if you want to exchange this or get something else, you know. So maybe if the shoe's on the other foot, maybe I will start including gift, gift receipts. But are you, a, uh, are you a good gift giver? Yes. Well, yeah. 
Okay. I either just get something mailed in or which is usually good, or like I make something, or I'll be yeah, like, oh, you that's have, specifically you this person. Literal talent that you can utilize. I'm a talented person, you yes. You do a lot of art. Yes. Are you running that back this year? Uh, no. Oh, you had to break it to the nieces that you are not painting for them. Oh, the pro- well, the problem is the two nieces Yikes. that actually have consciousness, uh, I do have for is them. The, is the third okay? Well, no, they're, they're, the, other, the third one is like, Year and a half or something like that. They don't have conscious thoughts. They don't. They don't know stuff. I, you're giving them. You're giving them no credit. You don't think babies have thoughts? Uh, they do, but they're not going to remember them. I, like it's like have you ever seen a dog dream? No, babies I dream. Oh yeah, you've that's never that's seen a dog that's dream. Not remember. Okay, when it's my sleeping? niece isn't going to hold it against me that I didn't get her her painting when she was one and a half compared to when she's yeah, three. but she's going to compare her other her sister's paintings when they were one and three to 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 hers, hers. when she's three. Yeah. So? Where's my one-year-old painting? Oh, you didn't get one. I only did... The, well, I, it's funny because... The, dig, your, dig it further, Randy. Because the first niece, I did get give it to her when she was like one years old. The second niece, I took like two and a half years, to, and she just finally got it last the, year. The poor third one is waiting until she's in kindergarten. Yeah. And I got a fourth one to make something for Goodness. Her I, I, I really, that's what I dug my hole into, like having to do everything for these, for these dang kids. They don't get me anything. Well, they're, they're three. A, they're a bunch of freeloaders. So that being said, you're a pretty good gift giver there, Randy. Yes. I am too. I, I like I would uh, think so. I, well, at least I'd like to think so. I, I, I like putting thought into it instead of being like, here's a Barnes and Noble gift card. I've turned around on the gift cards from when I was younger. Like, I, As in you like them or don't? I like, like them now. Because oh. I understand it is, it's more, it's less than, it's more mm-hmm. of a gift than just cash. Just cash is like, oh, I can just use this, spend bills. Thanks. That is what like, that is what cash but, is. But like a gift card is like specifically saying like I don't know what you want, but I want you to splurge on yourself at this specific place. Yeah, like, like I don't, don't know what you want at me. Pottery Barn, yeah. but I know you like it. I don't so, know what you want to eat at Lupe Tortilla, Randy. Like, but I know you like it. My my uh, my brother and sister in law just recently texted me and said, "What do you want for Christmas?" I'm like, "I don't know. Get me like Amazon and like uh, Kohl's gift cards." Like I I really don't know what I want, and eventually I might want something for one of those too. So it'd be just nice to have Kohl's gift card. You can never go wrong with. Did you see? Did you guys see on Twitter today that I got ten dollars Kohl's cash just from Kohl's as a gift? Yeah, I tweeted at them. Does that make you a Kohl's influencer? I wish. Hopefully, hey Kohl's, if you're listening or watching, sponsor me. I'll go in your catalog. It would be funny to do a catalog of some sort. We should do a professional Christmas photo. Should I just do my own catalog (laughs) for Kohl's? Yeah, you. I mean, they would definitely like interact with it. They'd probably steal your IP and use it for. Uh, monetary purposes. But. Steal this IP, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know yeah. has their own IP that we probably can't steal? It's another ad read? Our friends over at Roman. When the moment for intimacy arrives, Randy, you need to be ready. Roman ready. Okay? You follow? Mm-hmm. Whether you've been in a relationship for years or you're just getting started, perhaps, having the confidence that comes from preparation means you're free to enjoy the moment when that moment comes. You know what I mean? You following? Yes. Intimacy. Even though you're far from ordinary, the truth is that ED is very common, Randy. In fact, 52% of guys aged 40 to 70 experience some form of erectile dysfunction. That's over half. Yeah. Go to GetRoman.com slash mail in now to speak to a U.S. licensed healthcare professional about erectile dysfunction and get $15 off your first month of treatment. How about that? ED is more common than most people think. Like I said, 52% of men between 40 and 70 will experience some form of ED. And the benefits of ED treatment, Randy, can help you reconnect with your partner and rediscover the joy of sex. Nothing like not getting up. Roman can help you. You want a sturdy need... Roman column. Nice. I don't, never mind. With Roman, you can be confident. It's confidence personified, in fact. It's the self-assurance that comes from knowing you've prepared yourself for that moment when intimacy arrives, and their system is completely confidential and totally totally discreet. No big logos or labels on packages. You get a free online evaluation and ongoing care for ED, all from the comfort of your and privacy of your own home. Best part about it is it ships to you for, uh, for free with two-day shipping. How about that? That's a deal. Whole process is straightforward, convenient, and discreet. Getting started is simple. Just go to GetRoman.com slash mail-in and complete the online visit. Again, go to GetRoman.com slash mail-in today, and if you're prescribed, get $15 off your first month of ED treatment. Make sure you're ready to have confidence and control 
this fall and holiday season, maybe when you're back at home in your hometown going after the white whale, Randy, that you might have never been able to hook up with at uh, Christmas time. The great white buffalo. Get Roman.com slash mail and can help you out. How about a voicemail? Let's do it. Hey, Brett and Sally. I'm trying to plan an Austin bachelorette party for June of 2022. And I was just wondering if I could get some tips from y'all. We have about 20 people going, kind of interested in doing a boat day, but not sure how to like figure out the logistics of that in Austin. Um, so if y'all have any great recommendations for bars, restaurants, whatever else there is to do, uh, let me know. All right, thanks. Bye. Randy, who better to do a Austin bachelorette party segment than you and I? And two guys. Two guys that are transplants to Austin. Yeah. No, I, I included this question because I think Sally would be great, and and we'll have Sally give her own. I'll, I'll include this question at some other time, too, and we can have Sally do kind of her own recommendations, or we can I can text her and say, hey, I got to tweet out a list from a girl's perspective. But... As guys who know the scene relatively well and have seen bachelor parties here and there. And you see about one, you about to see 10 every weekend. Literally. At least. I think we know something about this. Oh, a thing or two? Because we've seen a thing or two. What do you think, Randy? Austin bachelorette party. Uh, 20 girls is a lot, by That's the way. a lot. That's a lot. So hopefully, you're going to want to do something big. I don't want to get an Airbnb. For, with 20 girls, yeah, you want an Airbnb. I feel like this is like a pedal tavern group. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I don't know. It's cliche, but it's yeah. everybody does it. Some people think it's cliche. I've never done one and really want to do one. They look oh, fun as hell. I'm sorry, Randy. I will do a pedal tavern with you. Just you and me? We you can and probably. Bartender? We can have other. Adam, Adam, are, you you 20, are you 21? Yeah. Okay, we'll do Adam too. Okay. But uh, yeah, they're cliche, I think, but like they're fun. You're, you're not going to, you're going to get on and you're going to have fun. Yeah. And people are going to look at you, and they blast like Shania Twain. And Austin has about thirty of them. And, so. and honestly, I think the them in Austin is pretty good because it's just you're going down Sixth Street, and it's pretty good, easy road to navigate, and it's a strip of ours. I feel like some other places, other cities, they're not as convenient because you have to Correct. bounce around. Like Nashville, I think Austin have that central location. But like Chicago, you have different neighborhoods and like there's only yeah. some bars in certain places. Austin, it's all like one strip. Yeah, Austin's kind of easy, right? Where if you're doing a bachelorette party, I love the late day idea, by the way. I think late Travis or talk, but I'll late Travis or Lake Austin, Friday or Saturday during the day, all day, is almost a must do if you're doing it in the summer because it's too hot to do stuff all day and then go out all night. Like mid-August would be miserable to do that, but being on Lake Travis or Lake Austin would be phenomenal June's for a fine, big group. Though, here. June's all right, but it, it's still hot. Um, so I would do late day for sure if you're a bachelor or bachelorette party, because a bachelor party I would suggest golf. I would just suggest like a brewery. Um, if you're a bachelorette party, you could do a guided wine tour because wine country is relatively close by. If you want to go to Fredericksburg for like a little bit of time, you know, get up. Get some breakfast tacos, go to Fredericksburg, come back, and then go out at night. That's always an option. I would uh, also say, I'm just kind of thinking of Saturday day activities, because Saturday night's easy. Go to dinner, get Mexican food, get sushi, get steak if you want. Get uh, There's a bunch of really good restaurants. Plan on a nice dinner Saturday night. Friday night's a, an easygoing dinner. Maybe it's a Mansell Rancho. Um, getting everybody in from their various airports and whatnot. And then Saturday day is late day. Lake Travis or Lake Austin, rent a boat. It's awesome. Wine country, if you want. Or do like a, uh, you do a, a, a hotel pool sitch. Like the Fairmount does day passes. Oh. I didn't Fairmont, know that. excuse me, Fairmont. Yeah, they do day passes for like 20 bucks or 40 bucks or whatever. And you just go to that pool all day and, and chill. That's not bad. Yeah. What do yeah. you think? Uh, I disagree with the lake day. Why? The That's crazy. Day. Because you can do a lake day anywhere. In around the country, and Austin specifically, I would say you can you go to a bar, Austin, on a but I would say do a paddleboard, still get on the water, but like renting a boat and going out there and like going to the the port and starboard and doing all that stuff. Uh, it's the just, what? It's just, I'm just saying boat terms. It's just too much of a a production and stuff, especially with 20 people. Where That's like, a lot. Yeah, yeah. With paddleboarding, you can just go to. Paddleboard, which is something you can't do in other cities, and you can just go out to that little place by Lamar Bridge, and it's just like Party Cove there, and you can bring out 
alcohol. We've done it. And it's just easy way to get a bunch of people. You're on the water and you can have fun. And also I feel like it's a little less exhausting than a boat day. A boat day is usually like four or five hours. Like you can just go out there for ideally. You can go out there for like two hours on the paddle board and just get back and go do other stuff. You want to do ra- rainy day drinking, I I would say for sure. As in rainy go, day go, drinking, not go, rainy go day dr- drinking. Day drinking on rainy. Street. Correct. Yes, uh, I guess this is. Rainy's great uh, at night too, but better during the day than West 6th is during the day. Yes, I think if I'm going out on night, and I, especially if you're in town, you got to do Dirty Six. You've never done Ooh, it, but I disagree that's with where, that like, all, yes, heavily. Adam, Adam knows. If you're a tourist, if you're 20, you have to go there. If you're 22 or 23, yes. If you're 32, 33, you're going to no, hate you it. Still, you still can go there. That's no, where all the live no, music no, no. is. West Sixth on I, no. A at least have party. one night on on Dirty Six. You will enjoy it. Disagree. Don't I, listen to no, Randy. No, I hold on, hold on. Let's uh, show of hands. Who thinks they should go on Dirty Six? Uh, me and Adam. Adam's 21. It's still a fun time. If, <laughs> if I ever had friends in town, I would do at least one night on Dirty Six so they can see it. It's a, it's a fun time. Uh, I would go paddleboarding over uh, boat day, but I think I agree with you that. You should do some type of water activity, whether it's Agreed. the pool pass or boat day or paddleboarding. Get some, get on the water, because in June here it is going to be warm. Randy's advice, Adam: get wet. Yeah. I just do a shaka. Um, I think, yeah, dinner. Go to Matt's if you want. That's a good yeah, way, place. Because you to have get... to think about, okay, I have a group of twenty people. Yeah, it's tough to go to like an intimate sushi spot, right, or like traditional steakhouse, because you have so many people, but. Day drinking rainy, hit up the food court, uh, food food trucks. That's or, a big awesome thing. You have yeah, one day, like, food trucks. Then you still have to find like three picnic tables to get everybody together with. I like if you're gonna do and try to do twenty people consistently in the same spot. You got to plan that out well ahead of time. Yeah, well, I mean these. It's a bachelorette party. They're, they're usually way more structured than a bachelor party. Use the batch app actually for. Ooh, stuff like that. yeah, that's a that's a great tool there. Very good tool. But yeah, I mean, Austin has a lot of fun drinking spots. Uh, is there anything else? I guess the the wine thing. I, yeah, I it's didn't cool. Really think about that. That's that's cool. And if you are going to do a boat day, do Lake Austin. Don't do Lake Travis. Lake Travis is so far out. It's it's okay. Way, it's like an hour away from downtown. Yeah, that's the, fair point. Fair point. Lake Travis is also a party lake, though. But Lake Austin agreed is almost better for partying because it's closer to downtown and. Party Cove is sick. Yeah. Oh, get one of those, uh, the lily pads, the big ass, like, floaty thing. Yes. So if you're going, to, uh, usually the, uh, if you do a boat rental, like, with a captain, they'll have one of those. So if you were trying to come to Austin for a bachelor, bachelor, bachelorette party, mm-hmm. get an Airbnb close to downtown, like, maybe 20 minutes outside max, because that's still, that's not that bad. But don't, like, stay at Lake Travis. That is way too far. And then trying to go in and out. And have fun in the city, not worth it. So, but do make sure you stay in a good spot. The only thing about Lake Travis is that it does have the biggest houses. If you if you really want to like, it does. <coughs> but I don't think it's worth having to like get Ubers for twenty <coughs> people that take like forty five minutes or so to get downtown to like go to Rainy Street. So well, what you do is you get the party bus. Oh, yeah. for the whole weekend though. Well, you have twenty people, so yeah. I think that because that, it helps with parking, that helps with rides home. That like, I think party bus is the move. If you have that many people, just basically have an on-call party bus throughout the weekend. You know, like you're think. taking us to dinner Friday night. You're taking us downtown. You're picking us up at this location at one a.m. Et cetera, et cetera. If you want to straggle later on, you then you don't you don't have to get on the bus. Have an itinerary. You know who I think is young and fun that might have. Did we miss anything, Adam? And, and full of what? Just young, fun, and full of Austin that is in the college and stuff here. Do you? Did we miss anything that people should do and have fun in Austin? I'm still staying with Randy on Go Dirty Six. Oh my dirty gosh! Six. You guys are you guys are one young. night, one night, one like one hour maybe. It's so it's crazy. And if you're have you if you're been in there your, at night? I've been there one time. Okay, one I went time. to uh, live music with my uncle Mark. Shout out to Uncle Mark, and it was cool. But it was also like a Monday night, not a Saturday. Okay, it's yeah, nuts. It's it's fun though. I would say just do one night there. It's Bourbon least. Street on steroids. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Bourbon Street's pretty. I I don't know. It's, I it's I, I prefer West Street. Sixth or Rainy over Dirty. I will as far say as, as a out. local, yes, but as a tourist coming in, you have to do Dirty. Okay. Agree to disagree. 
Um, I guess, it, yeah, find some good spots. Definitely, you could just do food trucks one day and not worry about that much, but have a plan. Just look up some stuff. I think that's good. I think we kind of... We, we, we got, got it. it and they're going to be like, well, what exactly, like, what bar to go to? And the, I mean, on... Sixth or rainy, like the, rainy just, especially, they're literally all the same bar. Yeah. Pick a place that looks full, but not a huge line. Yeah. Like and if like, you're at Buford's and there's like a line out the door, it's like not worth it. Just go down to like Greenlight Social. That usually has a big line. Or, or like a Concrete Combo or something. They're all the same. Whiskey Tango's good. Yeah. Key Bar's usually good because there's nobody there. So if you have a group and you want to bring your own fun and not wait at a bar, Key Bar's great. No offense, Key Ooh. Bar. Rustic Taps, awesome, has live music. And then if you want to like dabble into some uh, some cool kind of old-timey bars at night, Deep Eddie or Mean Eyed Cat or yeah. Don's Depot. I, those are so far off the strip, though. Probably a mile, Uber. If you so. want if you you could, you could a scooter there. If you want to get drinks fast, go to Valhalla Esports Lounge. There's no one ever Literally, there. We have <laughs> you a, can walk in, get a drink, and leave. <laughs> literally, the most prime real estate on West 6th has an esports lounge. I think it's also by the same owners that own the new club right next door, Wild. I have not. There are some clubs that, in here, too, that I've never been to. I, 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 <coughs> Adam's uh, talking about it. What, Rio, Pop, and Wild? Like I've never been to any of those, but you can get bottle service to do stuff there. Green you can. Light, social, too. So if you want to get clubby. clubby, there's some places on West 6th to do that. I would say Dirty Bills, but 20 people in Dirty Bills, you're not going to be able to you, like have already, a... You already packed the, yeah. the bar at that point. Good karaoke spots, too. Egos. Um, I'm blanking on other ones, but there's there's stuff to do. You can't really go wrong with anything in Austin as Correct. far as like the bar scene. Because it's all in one spot. Yeah. It's, it does, it's like not like Chicago, not like New York, where everything's an Uber right away if you want to go. Austin is walkable from literally any district that it, that sounds fun or restaurant so it's a good spot for it oh, I talk about austin all day me too let's go to the next one randy you want to read this one no an old college roommate is always trying to get me to come visit her she mentions it about every two weeks and anytime i'm in her city we always meet for lunch or breakfast here's the catch in the past two months our conversations have gone from strictly friendly to something more confusing. She's recently invited me to come to our alma mater's rivalry game in her city and stay at her place. What's the rule with staying at a single female friend's house in your late 20s? Here's some context. We're both 28. I lived with her and three other girls sophomore year. She dated my friend for two years in college, and we've been platonic friends since. Also... She's told me I'm her only male friend that she hasn't tried something with. Possible red flag, I know. Oh, I don't know what to think cool. here. I was thinking totally one direction until he threw in that last part. Is she just trying to Thanos this and get all the Infinity Stones? Is that what that is? I don't think that's what she's doing. I don't know what, like, at first I'm, I'm thinking, okay, maybe she wants to try something. And then she said, you're the only one I haven't tried something with. But does that mean she doesn't want to? Or does that mean she wants to and is like insinuating, hey, I'm going to? That's what I'm taking. He it, lived it, with her for three years. See, too. This is a cra- This feels like a, a uh, episode of Friends. Here's the problem with dating apps and stuff like oh, this. Boy. These texts can We're be back. read so many different ways. And this is this is the problem with this. Like, I need to know the inflection of how she said it. And like, was she like, mm. you know, you're my only male friend I haven't tried anything with? Like, oh, you know that you're the only guy that I haven't like tried anything with? Like, haha, isn't that funny? Two different things. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's where I'm getting confused. So this guy's but either slightly more confusing. Really, it really is like makes it seems like it's more flirty. So he's either so deep in the friend zone that it's almost it's almost not even funny. Like it's almost hurt for me. As she really f- finds him like, as a close real, friend and like, like wants to hang out. The most platonic friendship that I've ever heard of in my life. Or it's... She wants to try something. She wants to try something. The, yeah, this is this is zero or 100. There's no in between. There's no So gray. he says, what's the rule? I don't know if we need to go about the, the rules here. I think we need to get to the, the, this to the bottom of this situation. Because I feel it for this guy. I, I need to know if he wants to try something. Right? What is the rule with staying at a single female friend's house in your late twenties? I have no problem. problem. Like if you're if you're in the city and platonic friends with somebody, I have no problem being like, all right, like crashing your couch or you can crash on my couch. That's that like for me, I, I don't get the whole like 
women and men can't be in the same room or else they want to like hook up. I don't, I don't, I don't subscribe to that necessarily, but this but if situ- it's flirty, like, it's confusing. If it's like already says. flirty. See, here's my problem with this. I don't says, know. What's the rule saying at a female friend's house? The rule is maybe it's okay. I, maybe just I'm a coward, but I'm not going to try anything unless it's super obvious. Of because course. Correct. If you, if it's I don't not do that going re- that way, you made the whole thing awkward yes. for the rest of the oh, time yeah. you're like, staying there. Like you're watching a movie and like staying at her place for the night, like whatever, whatever. And you like, you make a move and she's like, Ooh, no. It's like, ah, yikes. Yeah. I was, that, or she makes a move and you're like, Ooh, no. I just thought I was going to have your couch. Yeah. That's this, cool. He doesn't really, I would like one more sentence in here. That yeah. Says, there like, needs to be one I'm more. About it. There needs to be context for the context. Like, like how, well, how is he feeling? If he's about it, I think that you just have to set up a scenario where she makes the move. I think he, I think he sounds like he's about it. But he's also like, ooh, you dated my friend for two years. Like, are we cool after that? Or is, is my friend cool with that? Two years in college, though. They're 28. I, Randy, he might, have, he might have gone to med school. Okay. <laughs> well, still, I, I would say that that's enough time, unless it was like a very serious relationship. But, I mean, two years in college is, is not like, you know. I'm... Fucking with you. I think this guy wants something to happen. I think she wants something to happen. I think he's nervous about having something happen. I I say go for it, but not go for it. <laughs> That's oh, the best jeez. Way That's second the time that middleman Rand has has come on this <laughs> this episode. I <laughs> just middle of the aisle here. Uh, like I said, just try to maybe a scenario if she wants something to happen that she makes the move, but I would not make the move myself. Ooh, Randy wouldn't make the move. And you know what, ladies and pimps too. <laughs> like I said, it's just it's just if you're staying with them, it, it makes it awkward. If the move has to be blatant, that, blatantly it, obvious that the move is there. Otherwise, don't make the move. I think this goes for anything. It, even if you're a a woman staying at a guy's place and like there's flirtiness, like you as the guest can't really make the move. But then again, if you're the host, Ooh, if you're on, you don't want to invite someone to be like, expect. Oh my god, this is this man, is really throwing you for a this loop. This is throwing me for a loop. Pretty much, if he thinks that she's flirting with him and he thinks there's something there, you got ex- and you want it to happen, explore it. If you but, want it to happen, yeah. If you want it to happen, stay at her place is is setting up for a move to be made. That's like the chess piece has been moved one way, or it, it, this might be even be checkers. It might be that like straightforward. You guys are both flirty. You want something to happen. She wants you to stay at her place just in case, and and. What's what's the checkmate version of checkers? Or checkers King version me? of checkmate. Should just use chess that right. Yeah, yeah. should have fucking should. I really botched that <laughs> one, huh, Randy? I don't know. I think I think you just say go for it. And again, what do we say on this podcast? One, communicate. Two, lower your expectations. Nothing may happen, and yeah. it might just be a flirty weekend with some wine and and cheese. Or something might happen. And or something might happen, happen, and then you're happily ever after. But. On this podcast, we usually say yes to things and and see where they might lead. I don't know. The only male friend that I haven't tried is something with. I know that's like a. Is that a challenge? Is that a, I said is that, is that doubling down on the platonic nature of this? Let me know what happened. Person. Yeah, this one's the one I would like a follow up with. Go go and go to the game. Why I. Not? You know what I'm thinking though. This is this came in like a couple of weeks ago. And rivalry week was last weekend. Ah, uh, yes, yes. So I yes. wonder if this has just happened, yes, and we need to know how it went. I'm guessing they stayed with each other. Something almost happened, but didn't happen. Is my guess. Maybe this uh, this might be a, a a girl thing, but like always tries to get her to visit him to visit her. Like I'll just mention it to my my boys back home. Like, hey, you want to come to Austin? Like. You guys can come. I'm not like constantly trying to get them to come. Maybe girls just want to be better friends with their actual friends than guys do. But to me, that would seem like if it's constantly like, hey, come visit, it's like, oh, I want you to come, but as visit. If there have been, (laughs) if, if, if he, uh, conversations have gone from something friendly to more confusing, such as like, I don't know, sexting or nudes involved. I would say that everything else is moot, and yeah. They, yeah, they, gonna, yeah, Brad, that's not confusing. That's right. very straightforward. I right. don't think but, that's where they're at. But, but, hold on. If she sent me a nude, I have no <laughs> clue what this means. <laughs> Need your help, boys. Never mind. 
<laughs> Just do, do the do the liquid IV read, Randy. <laughs> Not doing it. You get all the good the good uh, emails about your beautiful ad read, so you do it. You're Thank a professional. You. Our friends over at Liquid IV are helping me out and have helped me out this holiday season already. Guess who was hungover uh, Thanksgiving morning? I actually brought a pack of this, to, uh, two packs of this, like as in pouches, to uh, my brother and sister. So that's what you meant when you said you're a pack a day guy. Yeah, uh, brought it in. They loved it. Also did it on Saturday morning after I went to uh, bars in Fairport, New York. Shouts to Western New York, Randy. Shouts. Liquid IV helps me every. Part of the day. One in the morning, if I'm hungover, because I just pop a liquid IV, get super hydrated right away. In the afternoon when I need a boost, right? Because uh, you use the liquid IV energy blend with a matcha or energy multiplier with a matcha blend. Mm -hmm. And at night, maybe I'm feeling a little run down after a day's work and I need to to, to boost my immune system a little bit. That's when I get the tangerine with the extra immune booster. Uh, I love that tangerine. You do after a workout, too. I know you work out. (laughs) Hydration multiplier. Boom. Liquid IV is making hydration a priority, which helps us feel healthier on a day-to-day basis and fuels us to be our highest potential. One stick of liquid IV in 16 ounces of water hydrates faster than more efficiently than water alone. Not only that, but the product tastes great with great flavors like watermelon, strawberry, and lemon lime. Are you going to be enjoying a few extra pops now that the holidays are approaching? This is what you need. It contains five essential vitamins, more vitamin C than an orange, and as much potassium as a banana. It's healthier than sugary sports drinks, no artificial flavors or preservatives, and has less sugar than one apple. It's made with clean ingredients, non-GMO, vegan, and free of gluten, dairy, and soy. So our, uh, you know, our maybe our, our food-sensitive folks out there can drink liquid IV without thinking about it. How about that? You know how they are able to do this, Randy? Make you more hydrated. Make you more sharp. Make you more with it. You know how? How? CTT. What's that? Cell- cellular transport technology, oh. a.k.a. the optimal ratio of glucose, sodium, and potassium, which deliver water and nutrients into the bloodstream. It's the perfect balance to help you hydrate more quickly and effectively. Liquid IV is helping you out this holiday season. Grab your favorite Liquid IV flavors nationwide at Walmart or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code MAILIN at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you get better hydration today using promo code MAILIN at liquidiv.com. That's a, that's a great deal. Great deal. How about the last one, Randy? Let's do it. Hey, guys. Love the pod. I have a friend who's constantly making trash moves on IG. For example, he constantly takes pics of his food and didn't ask me anything while having about 400 followers. Should the squad have an intervention for him? Thanks. No, let your friend get his clout up. What are you doing? Quit being a freaking hater. (laughs) Quit being being a, uh, 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 what, like a Debbie Downer. What's the cool word? Youth correspondent, Adam, for somebody who's like trying to, trying to bite your style. A hater. Yeah, a hater. Adam said haters. Uh, This this dude's a certified hater. You also asked the the worst people, people that are, you know, in the social media space. <laughs> yeah. Not just a regular person. We are uh, F-list influencers of our own. Oh, I'm Z-list. But, like, yeah, I can definitely tell, like, if I do stuff on, like, Instagram or stuff, like, friends are like, what, what the hell is Randy doing? <laughs> I know. I always feel self-conscious about promotion even or sponsored tweets and sponsored Instagram stories and whatnot, which is, like – they're, they're, they help us run our business, and it's all part of a startup and media world, and I think people understand that. But it does feel weird to be doing it when you don't have, like, 400 million followers. Yeah, which, like, my one post uh, over on at Ray Trimbacki on Instagram, uh, when I did the Camp Will Mommies post, I yeah. had to explain that to so many people. And yeah. that is such a hard thing to explain. You look about, great, like, though, and shouts to the Will Mommies. Uh, yes, it's my most liked uh, post on Instagram, but, like, I have to explain, like, well, here's the thing. It's, like, for the podcast, and it's... A camp, but it wasn't really a camp, but it was. So it's especially with our stuff. But yeah, he just wants to do his thing, you know, whatever. Maybe you could tell him to take better pics of you his You can food. totally make fun of him for it and just and just kind of like chirp him and be like, oh, yeah, dude, like Kendall Jenner over here taking pictures of his food for the for the boys, yes. all 400 of them. Make fun of him, but don't disencourage him. Correct, yeah. Is that a word, disencourage? If you need so. some, if you need him to take better pictures of food, go follow. What is it at Chaotic Eats? Chaotic Austin Eats. Chaotic Austin Eats on Instagram. That is cool. Adams of uh, foodie. <laughs> so the, the squad, the squad should good. not have an intervention for him. But 
You can probably clown him a little bit. Yeah, clown him, but you know, you don't need an intervention. You know, because if he comes big and he's gonna yeah. forget about you guys, yeah, he's gonna be like, You didn't think I could make it, my friends were haters. You're not getting the bottle service. Rain, rain, go away. That's what all my haters say. My pocket's stuck on overload. My rain never evaporates. Oh, I was so close. I I started slurring. Randy, that that'll do it for the mail in questions today. Do you have a shower thought you'd I like to do? I do, but I'm gonna be honest with you, this wasn't a shower thought. It was actually a high bath thought. Uh, you take high baths. Dude, I have been becoming a bath boy lately. I, we, we, I, we, I thought we were close to be done with this podcast, but we need to unpack this a little bit. <laughs> How did you discover you were, one, a bath boy, and two, a high bath boy? Well, well, here's the thing. Uh, so usually if I'm hungover or something during the summer, my best one of the best tools is just get out in the sun and go relax in the pool. Oh, okay. I was going to say. Yeah. Get out in the sun is the worst thing, I'm, oh, no, like the I, last I, I'm, thing I want to do, but I'm, pool is different. I'm also a hot body. I love, the, you know, the warm weather and all that and like sweating out all the toxins. But just getting out of the pool and just relaxing in body crazy. water is like one of, my, one of my remedies. But recently it's been getting a little cooler. So it's like in the 70s, which 70s is more go to a park than go to the pool. Sure. So I was like, all right, well, I still want to be like relaxing and surrounded by water. I'm like, you know what? I moved into a new place that actually has a little bit deeper of a bathtub. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try a bath. You try a bath. Try a bath. Got a little bubble. Got some uh, eucalyptus and mint uh, bubble bath solution and some Epsom salt. And I was like, you know what? Wait a sec. You do like you do like the whole nine. Oh yeah. You know, wow. I'm not just gonna go soak in like regular water. I'm like, I want to see what this is all about. And I did it. And I put on some just like. Lo-fi music. You light a I, candle too? I did not, but I did have only one light on, so it was that's what people people set the mood. I didn't like. Actually, I might have had one of the candles. One wow. of the test things. But anyways, you're a certified bath. Boy. I was just like relaxed. I'm like, wow, this is phenomenal. Wow. And then the next time, I was like, you know what? We're gonna make this even more relaxing and fun. Getting high Get and a then doing high for it. Yeah. So <laughs> while I was there, I actually started thinking about these, and I did have to. <laughs> dry my hand on the towel so I could type it in my notes. You don't have one of those bath like uh, holders where they put the books. No, I'm not I'm not Fulton oil and gas. <laughs> well that's what I'll get you for your, for Christmas. I don't I don't need one of those, but it sounds like you do. <laughs> um so here's what came into my mind. So you we go look at like old animals, we're talking about fossils and we can tell what are plant eaters and what were carnivores and stuff, mainly based on their teeth and whatnot. And we have canines, so we're like omnivores, we eat meat and animals. So do uh, gorillas and chimpanzees. It made me think, are they omnivores? I know monkeys like eat bugs, and, but whenever we think of apes and monkeys, it's only like bananas. It's the only diet we've been shown. Randy, that's like a cartoon. And then, that's like a- <laughs> do gorillas hunt? Yes. What do they? What do they hunt? How do they hunt? I think gorillas eat like squirrels and shit. I've never seen this. Uh, have you ever seen gorillas go to war? It's crazy. I, Dude, I've seen them. They like literally squat up, like like ten on ten, and the last one alive wins. It's nuts. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like when we when we watch like these nature documentaries, you always see the lions like taking down like a giraffe or like uh, oh, animal the stuff. The Serengeti. And like they show them hunting and show all these other stuff, but they only show like area and like territory disputes through apes and stuff and how their like family networks work. They never show them like hunt. Do they hunt? I only gorilla... see them eat fruits and stuff, but do they hunt? Okay, so gorillas stick to a mainly vegetarian diet. Okay. But there are monkeys that eat meat. I'm, I know. I know that they eat bugs when they pick it out of each other's like fur and stuff, but do they hunt? See? Somebody hunts. It's not, maybe it's not gorillas, but it's it's definitely. Uh, car- Do you, okay, here we go. Carnivorous. Do hunt? I don't know. If, if we are descendants of apes and we definitely like. Oh, ba- dude, baboons. Baboons? Don't hunt? fuck with baboons. They eat the fuck out of meat. So they they, hunt? Oh God. Do they have like a I would like to see a nature documentary where if someone knows of a video out there where it's was actually a nice production, it's not just, you know, some live leak shit. Um of like like baboons like squatting up and like hiding in trees and like taking down a baby elephant. Like I would like to see that shit. I just would think that's interesting. They have canines, I assume they're omnivores. Do they hunt? Dude. They hunt like birds and shit. See, okay, that's crazy. You, is there videos or just images no, or I'm like reading you reading this article? article. But I'm, wow. I want to see a video of that. I want to see a. They also eat each other. Oh god. Uh, okay, I don't know if I want to see that, but like lion taking down a zebra is like, oh poor zebra. It's like well, it's also kind of tight. I want to see a baboon hunt a bird. Granted, they, like 
they don't necessarily they're not necessarily like taking down oh chimpanzees are ba- in the dude, stone it age? says baboons literally like go after sheep and goats and antelope that's that's what insane. i need that's what i need to see you see the high bath works what <laughs> Dude, oh man, because like I, somebody this like going awesome. going after like frogs and lizards and stuff. That yeah, makes yeah, sense. Yes, yes, whatever. To me, that that like that that's like bear out. grills in the forest. Yeah, like know, catching whatever. a fish, right? Yeah. Grizzly bears catch fish. It's tight. Yeah. But like a pack of baboons running down a sheep. fucking sheep. Bah. It's gonna be a bad day for that sheep. Ooh, a baboon day. Ah, that wasn't as good. But anyways, yeah, that was my that was my high bat. I actually have another one too, if you want to get to it. But it looks like we're a little over an hour. We can get to yours. Next, I'm just, I'll, I'll, I am I'll, I'll, I'll keep it for the next time. Flabbergasted by baboons hunting, uh, like antelope. That's crazy. That is. I need to see the. I need David Attenborough. If you're listening, which you probably are, get us a get us some footage of that. I would like to see you narrate that. Oh, I, I just I googled I googled baboon hunt. That's that's not what I should have. Because you know what I'm saying. It it's now it's just humans hunting baboons. I don't need oh, to see not, that. Okay. <sighs> yeah. Sorry. It could be very vicious though, and that's why we've never really seen it. These, I think it is. Baboons Dude, baboons just... scare the fuck out of me. I don't like their face. Is Rafiki a baboon or is he a he's he, I think he's something else. He's a. That's a that's a little mermaid. Rafiki, uh, animal. You want to get to yours while I look up Rafiki? Sure. It's, he's a mandrel. Yes. He's, uh, he's I'm playing very, very similar to the. Baby. I'm playing beer league hockey tonight, Randy, for the first time in six years. Which I had to convince you to do. You did. Thank you for pushing me over the edge. I'm I'm scared. I'm going to be embarrassed because I'm I haven't skated in two years, let alone play hockey. I'm going to throw up. I'm going to be wheezing on the bench. And it's going to be embarrassing in front of new friends. Good thing you got that oxygen. I did. A little, a little ready. If you were, if you're listening out there, I just took a an oxygen hit. Uh, What's have you like played soccer or ran track or something in the last couple of years that you can equate this to? I played like slow pitch softball. Obviously, a very different situation. Honestly, not really for, since uh, since college. But this leads me to a, a concern um, that I'm not here tomorrow because I. Pass out? No, no, you'll be fine. Uh, I'm not really familiar with hockey and hockey in- injuries. All I think that they, you know, they're tough guys and they can break an ankle or they could, you know, get a tooth knocked out. But are are ACL tears common in in uh, hockey? Not very. Okay, they happen, but not. I wouldn't call them common like NFL well, common. I tore my ACL twice playing intramurals, doing like soccer and stuff. So, are you well, a uh, ultimate frisbee guy? That's the second time I tore my. Or is that a dodgeball? No offense. I you seem like an ultimate frisbee. I wasn't. Guy. I was in college. I mean, I'm fast, uh, and that's really all you need. And throwing throwing the thing accurately, but I was going to say there's sure also a, a huge part of that. I would. That's my thing. Is make sure you stretch and actually take that stretching seriously. Oh, my groins are going to be loose before this one because guess what? That's going to go real quick. Yeah. If I don't, so, or my hammies. Excited Ugh. though. Yeah, I'm excited. Get back on the ice. Yeah, Brett. Uh, Brett was he was invited. He was thinking about doing it, and then I, I forced him into it because I was going to call him a fraud if he didn't. You did. You yeah. literally said you're a fraud if you don't go. Yes, because, because I have a hockey podcast. Shouts to Cold Stove. Well, that, not that because of the mail-in podcast. You always say when you're in a new city, the best mm. thing to meet new people is always say yes. Yep, you're right. So, you're so absolutely he was about to right. Not listen to his own advice. Well, and then the, I, I call him out. And he said, "You know what? You're right." Little caveat: It's 40 minutes away. At Nine o'clock at night, so it's not the easiest thing to get to. Oh, huh, why don't you just take a party bus? Because it's just me. You see, you see, that's a callback to the. I, mean, it's, I don't, I don't plan on even though it's Netflix. called beer drinking or beer league. I don't plan on drinking like more really, than one beer because I'm gonna be like wheezing my my. Head I off. wouldn't drink at all beforehand. Oh no 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 chance. Yeah. Uh, if the, they want to go out if I have a beer afterwards, then yes. If you I have a beer that, on but, the bench, or afterwards, it's a different story. Yeah. Keep it to one, though. Are you going to chirp some people? No, because I'm going to be the one getting chirped. Yeah. What, what's your number? I don't have I don't have a jersey. Bro. and I So I have to go to play it against sports, pick up a jersey. Usually those jerseys uh, don't have numbers on them. So how is this all working? Who are you playing for? Uh, unclear. I'm showing up in whatever team needs a guy. Oh. But it's to, shouts to uh, Matt and shouts to Kevin. I think is his name. No, Dan. Shouts to Dan and Matt. Shouts. Who are backers that play in the uh, 
in or washed media fans who play in this league. Well, I'm excited. And they're like, dude, come out. I want to. I want to get into some more competitive stuff. The only thing I have really in my life right now is disc golf, and I do that now like maybe three times a year. <laughs> we done Damn, that's. I mean, J Bone got like injured. Depressing, like, Randy. Yeah, I mean, I, J Bone got it. That's right. He tore his ACL. No, no, he just he just hurt his shoulder. Didn't he tear his knee? I don't think so. I think he just hurt his knee. I don't oh, think okay. he tore it. Anyway, I don't know. Looking J-Bone forward to it. I will report back, Randy, on how this goes. Good. Good. And uh, if you're out there and you have any videos of bab- baboons, send them by the way. Correct. Maybe we'll discuss uh, on R&B Lunchtime Radio. Ooh. Keep an eye out. Keep an eye out. That'll do it for the mail-in today. Randy, did you have a good time? I had a great time. That was fun. That went by quick. Give us a uh, subscription on Apple or follow on Spotify. Rate five stars, review the podcast, and tell a friend about it. Hit the hotline number, 888-362-MAIL. That's 888-362-6245. Or you can write in at the link. In the Twitter bio at Mail In Podcast. Randy, where can the people find you? I am at Randy Trimbacki on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. That's R A N D Y T R E M, as in Michael B A C K I. Well done. Thank you. Well done. I'm at Schmerriman on both Twitter and Instagram. Adam, thank you. He's at New Datum, for those wondering. And um, at Chaotic Austin Eats. Yep. Oh, okay, that's yours? Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Chaotic Austin Eats. Shouts. We'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye.